Hello, my name is Ian McCall and this is another video from the Demoscopy Made Simple series. Today we're going to talk about melanoma in situ mainly. Very often you'll get lesions that for the vast majority of it's melanoma in situ with a small invasive component. What I want to go over is to look at all the features that can be associated with melanoma. We've got to do it within 15 minutes. First of all, the clues to melanoma. We've looked at these before. Um, let's just go over them again. Thick lines reticular are branched especially peripherally. Lines parallel ridges, lines radial or pseudopod segmental. Gray or blue structures, gray dots. Black dots or clots peripheral. Eccentric structureless, white lines. Polymorphous vessels uh, with some dot vessels in varying shades of pink within a lesion. We've gone over this section uh, earlier on. You can look at the video down here if you click on it, um, on clues to melanoma. But this was just to remind you. Also, this is to remind you what not to do if you're biopsying a, a lesion as a suspecting melanoma. This is the lesion in the chest wall. This is where someone's done a punch biopsy. This is the punch biopsy here. It was reported as a mildly dysplastic nevus was regression. <laughs> I suppose that it was a regressed and any uh, uh, melanocytic element that was left behind probably looked like a dysplastic nevus. Anyway, it was a big superficial spreading melanoma. If you're going to biopsy that, an incisional biopsy across it or a big shave of uh, a relevant area. So let's get on to melanoma as thickened lines reticular, especially peripheral. <clears throat> let's look at this one. I mean, clinically, in a lot of these, you wouldn't need a dermatoscope. I mean, that's a melanoma, just looking at it. Look at the varying shades of pigmentation. Very black and dark, indicating most of your melanin is superficial. And when you look here, you've got your thickened hyperpigmented network and a grossly thickened and distorted lines reticular here. If we were to enlarge this, you'd see that these were uh, thickened and obliterated lines, lines reticular. All of this was melanoma in situ, so the melanoma is very, uh, the melanin is very superficial and hence the black color. Here's another example with some histology. Let's make it just a touch smaller. This was a clinical lesion here on someone's back. Uh, this bit almost looked like a sept K, but you had this pigmented area. When you have a look at the pigmented area, you've got this thickened area of darker lines reticular peripheral. Here you've got varying sizes of lines reticular here within this lesion. Um, there's also, if you look at these, there are actually brown circles um, here. And these brown circles were part of a Clark nevus that this was reported as uh, arising in. This was the histology. Uh, confluence of nests here, which is part of the features of a uh, Clark nevus, melanophages in the dermis. There were areas of uh, a focus of melanoma in situ arising within this. What about, well, I haven't got melanoma as lines branched. Usually it's lines branched peripheral, and it's usually seen in association with uh, lines retic. What about melanoma as lines curved? Well, normally lines curved we uh, see that as being a solar lentigo or a, perhaps an early flat severity keratosis. But this was a large lentiginous melanoma in the back of the wrist. Um, and a lot of these lines here were, in fact, in my opinion, lines curved. There's a mixture of lines. I mean, there's bits of lines we take here. I think there's even some small polygons uh, within this. Um, but this is a lesion where if you dare to biopsy a little bit of it out here, you might well have got a report of a solar lentigo instead of a lentiginous melanoma. Again, clinically, a solar lentigo wouldn't look like this with the varying types of uh, colors of pigmentation within this. Lines parallel ridges in the feet, lovely sign of melanoma. Again, clinically, this area of pigmentation, the melanin confined to the of ridges, not the, uh, not the furrows, that's the ridges here, these are the furrows, so thick pigmented ridges. And this is an acral melanoma. 
What about lines radial peripheral or pseudopods? Well, we might go to this one first. There's your lines radial peripheral. I mean, again, very obvious melanoma. Pink area here corresponding to this area here with the pink dots. Some pseudopods and peripheral dots out here. Blue-black structureless. Some pseudopods down here. But let's concentrate on the lines radial peripheral for this one. Good idea to look at this. Look at this and just compare the two. So, lines radial peripheral as a feature of uh, melanoma. This one here was, again, mainly to sew the pseudopods. That's the clinical pinkish area round about again. A lot of pseudopods here indicating cells uh, at the dermoepidermal junction or even up into the uh, epidermis growing. As I say, represents intraepidermal junctional nests of melanocytes. So again, very obvious melanoma. But these are pseudopods. What about melanoma as white lines? This one's always difficult. Um, this was a desmoplastic melanoma. This was the lesion on the back. You can almost feel the thickened sort of collagenous nature to it. There were some white lines within this as uh, representing the collagen in the dermis. And it may be the only real marker that you can see in some desmoplastic melanomas. Others, in fact, have a, a superficial spreading component, a lentical malignant component uh, over the surface of them. And in those ones in the back, you've got to watch. You don't do just a little superficial shave biopsy and you miss the desmoplastic element underneath. This one didn't have that. And it's these white lines that I'm putting forward as a feature that you might find or might help you to diagnose a desmoplastic melanoma. What about melanoma as gray circles? I don't think we have too much trouble. We've shown you this one before with gray circles. That's the clinical lesion here in the nose. These are gray dots around the follicles, giving you the gray circles. Melanoma's brown circles, I don't have a good example at this point. I'll put it in the blog when I get it. Melanoma's clods. Um, this was a lesion on a man's back. Here, there were actually quite a few gray dots within this. Gray dots are always quite useful as a marker of, uh, of melanoma. They indicate regression, they indicate something's going on there. And it's worth having a good look at a lesion. It's got a lot of gray dots in it. There were brown clods down here. So this was uh, melanoma in situ with brown clots. There are a lot more brown clots in the other part of this lesion. The clods are due to these um, nests of cells here. Um, almost put this one pushing high into the epidermis, this one at the uh, dermoepidermal junction. This is what gives you your brown clots when you look at it. Melanoma with blue clots, often the differentials are either a basal cell skin cancer or a melanoma. You go looking to see if there are any uh, serpentine or well-focused linear branched vessels because that points you more towards a basal cell skin cancer. Here though, with a deepish blue clot of uh, an invasive melanoma, this was the clinical lesion here with the blue area corresponding. Some lines were ticked round about, but blue clots as a marker of melanoma. We've talked about grey dots. Here's several examples with melanoma with grey dots. Here was a white structureless area of regression. These were the grey dots. This was uh, a thickened lined reticula. This was the image here. I think the image with the varying colors is much more suggestive of melanoma. So grey dots as a manifestation of regression within the melanoma. Here's another one uh, on the neck. Might need to let's just move this along a little bit. Could you just see it? Now, here's this lesion here, biggish lesion, varying pigmentation within it. Again, you need to biopsy this carefully to arrive at uh, correct diagnosis. And I should have two R's. Um, now, lentiginous melanomas off the face often present like this with gray dots and then some polygon structures um, and lines curved here suggesting that it might arise from a solar lentigo or at least in association with uh, a solar lentigo. So gray dots and polygons for lentiginous melanoma. It's a recurrent theme. Here's another one on the uh, scalp. 
this one were two. This was a simple lentigo. This was uh, actually it was an invasive melanoma in a small part. But the vast majority of it was like this, uh, was a lentiginous melanoma. Um, scattered gray dots down here, scattered gray dots up here, and I think the somatic polygons, but uh, I may be imagining it with this one um, because I know the diagnosis. But uh, certainly a lentiginous proliferation of abnormal um, melanocytes. So again, fairly subtle lesion dermatoscopically, but the gray dots help you and any early polygons help you as well in these lesions. Melanoma's brown dots, not normally, excuse me, melanoma's gray dots. There were a lot of brown dots in this lesion here. This was the clinical. Let's see if we can make it just a touch bigger. There we go. Again, some of these look as if they might be in lines, but they're, uh, and hence you'd think of a pigmented IEC, but there's varying sizes to these, these dots. This was the clinical lesion here. Um, so sometimes brown dots scattered like this can be a feature of uh, a melanoma, as it was in this particular case. Melanoma's peripheral black dots are clods. Here we go here, mainly clods peripheral, some black dots as well. Lots of other features in here, even some polygons in this particular uh, melanoma. But I mean clinically, look at the varying pigmentation. Always a melanoma. This is another one with polygons here. Again, gray dots, some polygons. This was a lesion in amongst all these seb -Ks. Um, this is probably a bit of regression, this pallor that we're seeing down here. Again, a bit of line through tick. And to finish off, melanoma with pink dot vessels. This one here, corresponding to this area, blue-gray structures, peripheral dots and clods, perhaps some white lines within this and line through tick in this too, but it's dot vessels in a pink area would have you thinking of uh, certainly melanoma. And this is another one that's perhaps even more subtle, um, a lesion on the uh, forearm. There's the clinical, there's the clinical there. Someone already done a punch biopsy. I think there's some white lines in this. There were some dot vessels here, a little bit of peripheral brown structure this here as well, a hypomelanotic melanoma. And we'll end up with these two here. And in melanotic melanoma, polymorphic vessels, there were a few dot vessels as well, not many in this, and usually we like polymorphic vessels plus dot vessels to allow us to make a definite diagnosis of a melanotic melanoma. And the last one, lesion on the calf, thickened hyperpigmented area here with the lines through tick. There were polymorphic vessels in here plus dot vessels in this amelanotic portion. Of this, uh, of this melanoma. So polymorphic vessels plus dot vessels are certainly highly suggestive of uh, malignant melanoma and a melanotic type. Well, we better finish within our 15 minutes. I hope you've enjoyed that quick run through. Take your time and have a look at it again. Thank you very much.